of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you would lay down your life that I would be set free Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me Who brings our chaos back into order Who makes the orphan a son and daughter the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. Take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Jesus I sing for All that you've done for me Shoulders, a 
ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus. Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Shall I? 
Yeah. 
as you live in me. Lord, renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life, in living every day. morning everybody and yes you're right between the baby shark song and the baby jesus song it'll never leave your brain but the baby jesus song is way better let me tell you so <clears throat> back <clears throat> if, if those of you don't know um stephanie and i had recently celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary um i didn't even get her a card but I'm having a trophy made because she probably deserves that. <clears throat> yeah, there you go, right? But I do remember way back, and you would remember, I hope you would remember this too. They didn't invade our house like they threatened to do, the church that we were working with at the time, but they gave us a laundry basket full of canned goods with not a label on it. Remember that? So, you know, now... It, it actually got fun after a while because I, I got pretty good at shaping them, figuring out what they were, you know, but talk about a surprise, you know, with some, oh, eh, well, hmm, don't like those, but I guess that's what we're doing tonight. You know, that's kind of a thing with that. And isn't it interesting how sometimes you get a surprise out of some of those things? I got a call from the lady I purchased my chickens from. I got six or uh, six new chickens this, in the last a month as well. And you're like, Pastor Rob, what are you talking about? Well, we're getting there. Just give me a minute. Takes me some time, you know. Got to let the eight squirrels go through and we'll be done. And so she got, she frantically called me and she said, holy crumb, just so you know, one of my chickens started crowing. And I'm going, okay, you know. And she said, the place I bought them from said they're all supposed to be females. But, and I'm like, yeah. And I've actually, I actually have a book called Chickens for Dummies that I am reading, right? <laughs> Want me to show it to you? <laughs> and I've been reading this. And I've learned a lot about chickens, you know? <clears throat> so I also know why we eat them. But even mo moving on with that. So... She said, just in case, 
somebody in that population I gave you. And I said, yeah, I mean, it happened. She goes, well, I'll excuse you. She felt really bad. I'm like, it ain't that big of a deal. You know, if we get a rooster, we get a rooster. It's not a, not a big deal with it. Now, it's been long enough. I'm pretty sure we didn't, we're not going to get one. But there's two tell, if you didn't know this, there's two tell, tell signs that you're going to get a rooster, you know, early on. Um, and, and one of them is crowing, obviously. And they never shut up, by the way. It's not like the cock crows in the morning. The cock crows in the morning, in the mid-morning, during brunch, during mid-brunch, during lunch brunch, during lunar brunch. I mean, they crow all the time. And the second thing is they grow spikes out the back of their legs. So I've heard no crowing. I've seen those spikes. So I'm thinking we're pretty good, but they're still not laying yet. But, you know, we're, we're hopeful this fall. <clears throat> but I want you to think about something with those two stories. Have you ever been sold a bill of goods? Somebody sold you something that they're like, oh, yeah, this is, a, this is not what they said it was going to be. You know, you've been there with that. And, and most of the time, you're not going to find out until the product is actually doing its, its job. Let's just take breaks shoes or brake pads to get today <clears throat> the day you want to know that they're not going to work is the day that you're actually putting them on or going yeah you know i mean let's face it most of us in here have or at least watched me or has done brake jobs before been around them those kinds of things and certainly when you're talking to the guy putting them on or buying or especially buying brakes right you're not being like hey you think these are going to work well i hope they're going to work <laughs> You're, I mean, you're going to put those brakes on, right? Probably not, you know? You want to find out beforehand. Well, sometimes you don't get to do that. And certainly when the enemy wants to do his stuff, make his agenda, there is not a whole lot of effort to go, hey, I'm the bad guy, you know? Back in the day, you knew who the bad guys were in the movies, right? Why did you know that? Because they always wore the black hats. Right? And of course, if you, as, as the movies progressed, right? You know, if it wasn't the black hats that got you, it was the music that got you. Because it was not good music. These were the bad people. Jesus warns us in verse 15 of Matthew chapter 7 as we're winding out the end of the Sermon on the Mountain, and really walking through his conclusion like we're talking about that. He says, watch out for false prophets. And here's the deal. You're not going to know who they are. The idea would be is, when Jesus says they're going to come into you in sheep's clothing, they're going to look like different things, they're going to sing a different song with it, but inwardly they are ferocious words. Well, that you find out that those are Jesus' words in verse 15. And when Jesus says, watch out for these people, he, and, he, and he's going to give you a, 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 something to measure it by. But I'll tell you something. Sometimes it takes time for this measurement to come along because there, there is certainly this, this person that we work with called the Holy Spirit. And, and some of us are blessed with the opportunity of the, of the discernment of the Holy Spirit. And I'm sure every one of us in here have, have walked past somebody or someone that's been trying to act spiritually. You're, you're, you're just in your heart, you're just going, yeah, that, that ain't right. You know what I'm saying? They're saying all the right words, but it just, it just ain't right. Jesus says, you will know these people in verse 16 by their fruit. Now, here's what I want you to understand, right? It takes a while for fruit to grow. Would you not agree with me? You know? I like how Pastor Joseph Britton, he was preaching a, a sermon in Africa, and I was listening to him as he was doing that. And, and he made the point, and I'll tell you something, some things cross cultural barriers, and some most of them don't, especially with our Americana thought process. But this one sure did. And he made this statement. You know that it takes the same amount of time to grow an apple today as it did in Jesus' time. Think about it. 
And yet, in our little world, because we've got microwave ovens and we have immediacy that we think that we need to have, and certainly we watch videos and movies, you know, to span somebody's lifetime that is slammed into an hour and a half movie, you know, we, we're thinking that we can figure this thing out. And I'm telling you, a lot of times we won't, but I will tell you what you will find. You will know a tree by its fruit. Now, <clears throat> I've planted a couple of trees in my day. Most of them I have pulled out and buried because they didn't last very long. There's a few of them out there, though, that, that are still growing. And one of them is a peach tree. And we tried planting two. And guess what? One of them died. So we don't get a lot of peaches out of this thing. But I'll tell you, it took five or six years before it started showing any kind of anything with it. And I, and I want you to, to understand some of these things as you're, as you're walking through them, you know, when Jesus says you will recognize them by their fruit in verse 16, all right, what you have to know is, is that, you know, many times when we watch something or a false prophet plant itself, we're not going to really know about it the next day. It could take quite a bit of time, even years. See, Jesus starts, starts on with, with verse 16. He says, this is pretty simple. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes? No. Do people take figs? I don't even pick figs, so just so we're aware of that, you know. But do you pick figs from thistles? No, you don't do those either, because that's not where they come from. Because, you know, what what I believe, what what we need to understand is that you're going to see all kinds of folks out there that are going to claim that they are one of his disciples, and you're going to have to use some discernment out there between one thing versus another. And, and sometimes you're going to immediately see their fruit because it's like, yeah, that ain't working. I'm, I'm just, not, just not seeing it. But yet, I like when Jesus talks in verse 17. A good tree bears good fruit. A bad tree bears bad fruit. And in, in verse 18, a good tree can't bear bad fruit and a bad tree can't bear good fruit. And what we need to realize in our own immediacy, in our own culture that we live in, as much things as move very fast, I will tell you that over time, some things will, will take their time before you get around to getting to a place to understanding what that individual or what that prophet's intention is. And I will tell you, you know, they may not be an individual, although they can be. They may not be an individual from directly from the enemy, although we've seen that. But I'll tell you something just as bad as an individual is out there for themselves. And whether they're whether they are for for the enemy trying to sink a, a congregation or a church or an individual just trying to take advantage of everything they can for themselves, I'll tell you something, neither one of those individuals do anything for advancing the kingdom of God. And I will tell you, we have a responsibility to use our own discernment to figure some of those things out. I'll tell you this, <clears throat> one of the things that, that uh, I know that I have a very difficult time with is um, I had had this come up one time years years ago, not this church years ago, but somebody showed up to uh, one of the churches I was on staff at, and they said, "Hi, I'm," and they gave me their name. Great, and I play the guitar, and I want to play on worship team today. And I'm like, "Yeah," no. and and uh, and they're like, "What? Don't you believe in the spirit of God?" Yes, I do. And you have. You know, and in my mind, of course, what was, I probably didn't have a good book. And our pastor didn't let them, and he handled it very well. And I even learned a few things out of it. So I was a little younger back in the day. But certainly, I will tell you that one of the tell signs is individuals that want to really rush to certain levels of leadership opportunity and yet don't want to walk through the process. And there's a reason for the process. And it's not necessarily so you 
quote, get to jump through all the hoops because we're not a government organization here, let me tell you, because I've been through some of those. Things. But I'll tell you something about it. <clears throat> when an individual is much more about themselves and other things and their agenda and their other whatever's that they want to do, they certainly will demonstrate over time that they are not about the kingdom of God. And I'll tell you, even though they may say they're about the kingdom of God, I'll tell you where my cut line is. Is it about you and the kingdom of God? Or is it about the kingdom of God and you helping to be a disciple of it and build it, the kingdom of God? And that's where we're at with this. I'll tell you something. Here's some of the best, best ways we understand that. Number one is pray. I, I will I will certainly tell you, um, having worked around people who uh, have told me that they've worked in banks and things like that, one of the things that they train people on is they keep showing them, keep letting them feel what real money is, you know, because our money, our, our dollars have a feel to them. There's a certain paper and a certain ink that you print them on. And I'll tell you the way that they train with some of those, and I'm no particular expert, but but bank tellers and other individuals will develop a feel. And when a fake something comes along, not only do you do you go, hmm, that doesn't feel right. Right? You know what I'm talking about? They they also use, if you will, all right, and a lot of you, there's some of you in here that handle money regularly, right? You know, a lot of you will will use, you know, what's what's that marker where you throw the marker across it and it will tell whether it's a real bill or a fake bill based on its color. I wouldn't be able to know it because I could see it. But there you go with it. <clears throat> if you know anything else but what Jesus is saying today is you will know a tree by its fruit. So what does that tell us? We need to be spiritual. Ab um, ab okay, hang on a second. We need to be spiritual aboriculturists. I wrote it down. <laughs> aboriculturists. Yes. No, I wrote. I actually typed it in. <laughs> because I'll tell you, just as much as we have the, the charge, the commission to build God's kingdom, we have every charge and commission to protect God's kingdom. And the individuals that don't have the ability or understanding as they are growing in the Lord to protect us. How do we do that? Oh, we pray a lot. The more you know Christ, the more that you will understand what people's intentions are. The more you read about his word, yeah, this is really simple stuff. The more you read about his word, the more you go, that doesn't sound like my king and my God, that you make that comparison. Verse 20, verse 19 and 20, Jesus writing here, every tree, and here's their destination. Every tree that does not bear fruit is cutting down and getting thrown into the fire. And thus, by their fruit, verse 20, you will recognize. Folks, we have an obligation to build God's kingdom. We know that. We've been talking about it. We've been studying that. If you know anything about me, I'm that guy. You know, over over the 10 years we've been pastoring the church. Yeah, 10 years, guys. Come this October. Wow. 10 years. Time flies when you're having a blast, let me tell you. <clears throat> but I will tell you this. You know, as we've been doing that and been building God's kingdom, and 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 I will tell you, I, I know we are different people because of that. I see that we're different people. We have to be different people. We are different. I will tell you simply this, the closer you get to my king and my God and his kingdom, the more you will understand people's intentions of what they want to do. And you will know them by their fruit. The caution is many times because we have much of a better opportunity in our society today to cloak or for people to cloak their intentions. And many times you won't find out until days, weeks, years. But the best we can do is seek out first. You will know people. You will know the understanding. You will know folks by the fruit that they will bear and the intentions that they will have. 
and be on your guard. Be on your guard for the fall. Would you pray with me? Lord God, thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Lord God, help us to know, as you have taught us, to know those with the intentions of not building the kingdom, and certainly those with the intentions of breaking down the kingdom. <sighs> Father God, I pray, though, <clears throat> I pray that as people see us, as we've done this before, that people see us, they would see you. But yes, Lord, that, that even those that would be false prophets would come to an understanding of who you are and be kingdom builders. Oh, Lord God, thank you for your grace. Lord Jesus, I pray for those who with needs today, we pray for the Tompkins family as they continue to walk through those things. And we pray for those who, who continue to battle sick and illness and, and body ailments. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you will be the healer in Jesus' name. Like you said. Father, we pray also that uh, where there's a need for finances, wisdom, direction, that you would make the path straight and that, Lord God, you would provide the resources necessary to go about your business. And Lord, as we certainly have prayed here this morning and we will continue to do so, that when people see us, Lord, I pray that they will just see you. And if that's your prayer this morning, I invite you to say amen. And God bless you as you go.